Hey everybody, it's Christopher Smith. It's my FibLines quarterly update for December 4th of 2016. So I decided to do the update a little bit early uh, this year. Uh, it's really not due till the end of December, but so much has changed really that uh, we thought I thought it was worth um, sharing what I've what I've uh, been noticing here with FibLines in the market. So while we still have some trading left in 20, uh, 2016, usually the last few weeks of uh, uh, January or December are pretty slow, and uh, we just have one more big event coming up on the 14th, which I believe is a Fed meeting. So uh, a lot has changed in a short period of time, so I think I'll just take this opportunity to share out what my uh, observations are on the market. First, let's take a look at the general indexes. First, here's your uh, E-mini e S&P 500, ES. Uh, you'll see after the election, we basically just melted up to this next minor line right here, which uh, and you can see we sort of stopped and paused right there. If you look at the daily uh, or shorter term, um, map of that, you can see it's actually much clearer. We had almost a perfect three three bar deflection off of this uh, gray line over here. So again, we've had a huge run and uh, at least by that measure, it's time for a break. Uh, similar thing with the Russell, had a real big move here recently um, after the election. It was almost like a 10% move here from uh, the bottom to the top in the Russell. And uh, Again, very clear three-bar deflection off of this uh, this area up here. And then the other item was the NQ. NASDAQ futures. So NQ also had a, a move up, but actually it's been uh, it's been lagging the other markets uh, recently. And if we take a look at uh, Telchart TC2000, uh, we can see that pretty clearly on my uh, on this comparison graph here, uh, where the Dow, let me go back to DIA, uh, the Dow is blue, the NASDAQ is red, S&P is green, and IWM is brown. So for the, for the better part of 2016, the, uh, the Qs led the market to the upside with the Dow uh, and IWM lagging. And then just recently, uh, you can see here the Dow just shot higher and uh, is now outperforming uh, both the uh, SPY and the Russell uh, very, very recently. Uh, so yeah, it's been a huge year, new all-time highs just recently in basically every uh, every major index here. So it's been a great year for the markets. I believe we're up in the seven to eight percent range uh, for all three of these indexes. So been a big year for the market, but certainly very interesting politically. I'll talk about that in a second. So getting back to the NQ, let's go to the long term, which is one of the ones I reinterpreted here. Now my prior interpretation of NQ was, I believe, uh, the minor high was right here. So this is what uh, the previous interpretation of NQ was. And my new interpretation is the uh, well wave one ends at this uh, level right here. And I had to reinterpret it because we basically ran off the end of the 423% line. But um, we take a look at the old interpretation, which is right here. Drag down. You'll notice that there's almost an uncanny um, correspondence where my old 161 is, na uh, is now the 100. Um, excuse me. Yeah, it's now the 100. The old 261 is now the my 161 and vice versa. So you can see from my older interpretation, the 423 was right up here at this line. And since we exceeded that to the upside, uh, I had to reinterpret it. So the bottom is just where it was, but since this new interpretation seemed to rhyme, I stuck with it. And that shows now that our 423% our target on the NQ is up here in the 68.50 uh, range. So quite a, quite a ways to go, obviously, until we get there, but um, that's my, uh, my new interpretation of the NQ. So uh, overall, all this, uh, this election has really just been huge. and. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about that before we go to some individual symbols. So um, really that's the story of uh, 2016 is uh, President Donald Trump. I mean, it was a, it was a long year of indecision. Um, I don't think anyone was really sure what was going to happen, even though the, the polls and the media and uh, I think Real Clear Politics at one point had uh, Clinton at like 85% uh, uh, likelihood of winning and Trump at only 15%. Uh, you know, so the, uh, the popular wisdom was that um, Hillary was going to win and that just meant more slow growth and uh, more pressure for the drug stocks and pharmaceuticals. But instead what happened really, we had a, just a surprise rally, uh, excuse me, surprise victory by Donald Trump. And um, this is what the electoral map looks like. And uh, you know, you can see very clearly that um, the coasts, New York, Vermont, um, Connecticut, Massachusetts, to some extent Virginia, the DC Carter, all very much blue. Same thing for the left coast, California, Oregon, Washington, pretty much blue as well. But the middle of the country, all solidly red. And you know, this is really the story of politics in the U.S. It's uh, it's the red versus the blue. And uh, we've always been this way. If you think it's uh, this is more divided now than we've ever been, it's actually always been this 
the way this population versus land kind of uh, kind of struggle, and that's really one of the the fundamental um, compromises that made U.S. politics that uh, you know the structure of the House and the Senate is actually what underlies the Electoral College, and uh, it actually gives the advantage uh, to the landowners in the sense that the, the people who live in these sparsely populated large land areas technically have more uh, voting power than the people who live in the coasts, the population centers. And that's really the way it was intended to work, and that's exactly why the uh, the, hit, the victory was handed to Trump, even though uh, Clinton actually won the popular vote. So um, you may not like it, uh, but we trade the market we're in and not the market we wish we were in. So what has actually happened since Trump? Well, huge dollar rally, gold got crushed, euro got crushed, interest rates spiked, bonds tanked, all with the expectation that uh, Trump would uh, – be a huge boost to the economy, um, and uh, he would cause uh, higher deficit spending through tax cuts and uh, more government expenditures, which would lead to inflation. And of course, bondholders hate inflation. So that's really the theme here is that inflation is back and expect um, higher deficits. But um, it's also created some, some buying um, uh, opportunities in bonds, as we'll see uh, in a minute here. So, so really, it's just been a huge uh, change in a very short period of time. And it's very much counter to uh, what we saw earlier this year, where, where dollars, where, excuse me, where the uh, equities rallied and bonds rallied. It was sort of a strange uh, situation. So since then, obviously, it's equities have rallied even bigger. The dollars rallied and uh, bonds are just tanked. So uh, take, speaking of bonds, let's take a look at that. I did talk in my last quarterly update about um, about fixed income. And uh, let's go back and take a look. You know, I picked up some of this BAB and uh, bond, the PIMCO total return bond fund. So um, looking at our dividend yield, we can see that uh, we expect about a, almost a 4% from bond and a 4.5% from BAB. Uh, so bond uh, has pulled from 108 down to like uh, 103. So that's had about a 5% uh, sell-off. Uh, BAB's had an even bigger sell-off, actually closer to 10% from uh, almost 32 level down to uh, 29 levels. So, uh, you know, for for something that for an instrument that expects to yield five and a half percent, you know, a 10 percent sell off is a pretty big hit. So, uh, you know, that and that's pretty harsh for bond investors because previously they were having the the best of both worlds where the price prices were going up uh, and they were getting the yield the whole time. So, it's actually not a bad uh, buying opportunity here uh, for bonds if you've been underweight bonds, which I have for a long time. Um, so, fortunately, I, I when I bought it earlier in the year, I didn't, didn't load up. And, put the whole uh, investment in. So it's always good to time diversify if you can. In terms of the shorter term bonds, you can see they absolutely got crushed also. And you know the longer the longer term bonds obviously got crushed more than the shorter term ones. Here's TLT uh, went from uh, 143 down to uh, 118. And picking up my calculator, uh, 143 uh, minus 118. Twenty-five points divided by 143, and that is a crushing 17% loss in the TLT. So, hasn't been a happy time for bondholders, but uh, you know that's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, so, uh, what else? Let's take a look at some of the fib line symbols. So, probably one of the biggest winners of this period has been Goldman Sachs. G. Yes, I've talked about it in the last quarterly update. Uh, I've been along it for a while here, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't catch a lot of this rally. It was just some calls against it, which was successful for a little while. Uh, but I've been talking about Goldman Sachs, and I think the rally here pretty much shocked everyone to the upside. I was in pretty much the 159 area and sold some calls against it for a while and ended up selling the 170 calls here, which at the time this stock was uh, in the lower 60s, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. And I did, uh, you know, collect a premium on those calls, but the stock just rallied away to the upside, and uh, it's really been insane. I had no idea that Goldman Sachs would move uh, the way it did. And uh, I think everybody was taken by surprise, similar to the, whole, the entire Trump uh, uh, electoral victory. Um, not a new all-time high in Goldman Sachs. We did see new all-time highs in uh, J.P. Morgan, however. And a lot of other uh, uh, financials that have kind of been, been languishing for a while, Capital One, Discover, have all, all had some major uh, major rallies recently. Uh, MasterCard's also been a favorite of mine. I haven't been on that one for a while. That's also... Uh, uh, recently made a new all-time high, coming up here to the 423% line, recently started to sell off. Uh, Visa is the only big uh, credit card financial. It's actually kind of shaky. Recently went uh, negative on the, uh, the range bands after a reversal up here. All right, so back to some other FIB line symbols. Uh, Amazon's a big one. I always uh, like to talk 
talk about Amazon. A uh, huge story this year. But recently, uh, it's come off quite a bit. I mean, uh, our reversal is up six area. And then we've come all the way down here to the uh, 700, so quite a sell-off. And uh, with this, <clears throat> this recent uh, market um, change, the media has been saying that uh, the money's been coming out of the NASDAQ stocks and funding more of the defensive uh, uh, infrastructure-related stocks. And we can certainly see that with Amazon. Um, what about the fundamentals? Uh, what do they tell us? And <clears throat> so take a look uh, over here at the uh, telechart. And one of my favorite charts to look at here is, uh, is the fundamentals. So this shows us just in one view uh, what earnings growth rate, the latest earnings per quarter, uh, the pre-tax income, and the revenue growth. Um, so we can see here that Amazon did have a new all-time high uh, in, in revenue, <clears throat> but was more, recent, uh, more recently, uh, historically more, more normal in this recent uh, quarterly report. And Amazon's not a company that's run necessarily to make money. It's run really for growth. Um, but we can see where our on a, revenue growth has been accelerating. So I think Amazon's going to be a good buy at some point here. I don't think uh, the move is done. I think there's more uh, there's more juice in this one, but you have to let it run its course and, and try to find a bottom here. So you know, looking at the fib lines, I think uh, we might be coming up on a bottom here. Let's take a look. Uh, so we have a pretty major uh, fib line support here. This would be the um, 100 one. We've got the 261 line coming up here, right at about $700. So so watch that level and uh, you know look for a, a sell off and uh, or possible move higher, so that's that's really our next support point on Amazon. Um, Facebook, always been a big favorite of Facebook. Uh, it's been a rough time for Facebook. I mean, we had a, uh, I expected we had uh, great earnings uh, back here, <clears throat> the most recent quarter. And where are we going our earnings fundamentals? And we had, <clears throat> if you look at the long-term picture, we had a new all-time high in EPS in this latest, latest quarter. Uh, with uh, new all-time high pre-tax income, revenue growth rate's been good. So why is it selling off? I, you know, I don't know. It's, <clears throat> uh, but all I can say is I'm sticking with it because uh, sometimes you got to go with the fundamentals, and the fundamentals telling me that uh, that Facebook is uh, is a good company long-term, but short-term it just gets punished uh, for reasons that I can't quite uh, quite explain. <clears throat> so that's Facebook. Where is my recording item there? Okay, so Facebook, you know, looks pretty ugly, but I'm sticking with it because uh, I think it's a good, good company in the longer term, and I like the, the, the fundamental prospects. Uh, one company I've been in the house of pain on is Gilead, GILD. <clears throat> I did reinterpret this one to the downside in this recent quarterly update, and it looks ugly. I got to say, it's, uh, I got to ask myself, should I wash out and <clears throat> take a loss of this before the year is out? But I'm, I'm pretty deeply in the hole on this one. Um, I thought we were going to find support here at the uh, the 100% line, but uh, instead we just sold all the way off, and I'm all the way back down to the uh, the zero line here. So let me just go back and see. Yeah, actually, no, I interpreted this one to the downside. So <clears throat> this is now wave one, uh, 161 or 261. So now we're coming down really on uh, the 423 line to the downside with Gilead. So I, it hasn't been ugly. It's been pretty ugly for me. It's not pretty. Not really sure what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm just going to stick with it for the time being and possibly take a loss uh, before the year is out just for tax purposes. Okay, Alibaba. Um, I interpreted this one to the upside uh, most in my last quarterly uh, report, but uh, it did not materialize to the upside. In fact, it went, went more to the downside instead. So uh, I think Alibaba has been called the uh, Google of China, but um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, they just don't seem to be able to shake the stigma they have, there's a lot of counterfeit goods going on, and you know, Jack Ma might be a brilliant uh, CEO and marketer, but I just uh, don't think that Alibaba is a place to put your money in. Um, you know, there's always an issue with Chinese stocks where you don't really understand the fundamentals. There's a bit of uh, uh, grayness in terms of understanding exactly uh, transparency in terms of their, their fundamentals, their financials and accounting, things like that. So I would say uh, stay away from this one uh, much much prefer Google to the outside. Let's take a look at some other stocks that were reinterpreted. Uh, Texas Instruments, the 423 line, and now uh, selling off uh, below that. Um, Alta, 
which is a Fuson uh, chain. Well, it's really had a nice big pop recently here. Um, looks like it's got further upside ahead of it. Uh, Western Digital uh, upside, I believe that was heading down. And Q, we talked about Ross Source, RST is a retailer. You know, how many retailers you see they're doing well in this environment? But, but uh, this one has uh, had some huge moves recently, and this I went with a big, wide 100% line here, giving me a plenty of room for the upside. Um, generally, I don't like brick and mortar retailers. I, I'd rather stay away from it, but I figured I'd point it out. Uh, much rather see in a services company at Monster Worldwide, uh, Monster Beverage, excuse me. Um, I reinterpret for a three to one uh, stock split to the upside. Uh, JD, uh, it looks like it was interpreted to the downside. He looks like a sloppy sideways chart. Stay away from that. Gilead, we talked about uh, Pfizer, FISB, financial services company. Also had a nice big rally here recently. Uh, after a deflection off, looks like the um, 261 line here. So <clears throat> I guess if I had to uh, give you some advice here financially, I'd say financials have had a huge run at the upside, so you don't want to be buying those right now. You want to be buying stuff that's more, has sold off more. That would be your bonds, uh, your BAB, and your uh, your bond. I don't know if the, the route in bonds is really over yet, but I can think I can say with some confidence that uh, you know short-term moves get thrown back and uh, this move toward uh, the financials and away from the technology stocks is probably a little overdone. And I think um, once Trump gets into, uh, gets into office and we start to get a handle on what his policies actually are, um, we, we might see that everything he's promised is really not going to be able to, to pull off. Now, even if he, get, he ends up pulling off maybe 20 or 30 percent of what he's promised, that could be a huge uh, bump um, for, uh, for the economy. And that's really the overall theme here is, you know, under the Democrats, uh, we're kind of in a slow growth uh, mode. And uh, there was kind of a feeling that after the baby boom uh, bust, the baby, the baby boom peak was sort of peaked back in 2010 where the baby boomers kind of reached the end of their, uh, their maximum earnings um, uh, expenditure cycle that we're just going into a slower growth mode. And, uh, the best times were sort of behind us. And Trump's kind of had this kind of turned everything on its head. He's, he's turned politics on its head. He overcame the uh, Republican machine backed by uh, uh, Jeb Bush, who was uh, incredibly much better funded than the other candidate. He defeated him soundly. Ended up defeating all the other Republicans and then ended up taking down the, the Democrats and the whole Clinton um, regime as well. He ended up doing it really with zero political experience and his own money. So it's actually, it was a pretty tremendous accomplishment you know, it's really unprecedented in history. Uh, so, you know, from a business perspective, he's probably the most business-friendly person we've ever had in the White House. He, he believes in business uh, more so than, uh, you know, than in public work, than, uh, than the government, uh, you, know, hand, you know, handing out money to, uh, to people uh, who are in need. Uh, so he's talking about a huge tax cut for, for, for business, huge tax cut for individuals and large infrastructure spending. Uh, and that could spike the deficit, but, you know, does the deficit really matter that much? You know, you think with uh, <clears throat> the rise in government spending that um, that would really end up trashing uh, the dollar. Um, so, you know, larger deficits, you think, uh, what's that going to do uh, to the dollar, right? And that's really the big fear of people who don't like um, infrastructure, don't like deficit spending is that it's eventually going to lead to hyperinflation and, uh, and kill the economy. I don't know where my DXY chart is here. Let's try this. DXY. All right. So we had a pretty big run in the dollar even since uh, since Trump um, got elected. And looking at the larger scheme of things, so let's try dollar DXY. And there we go. All right. So you can see we had a nice run in the dollar here. And you know the, the worry of deficit spenders is that eventually um, it's going to crash the economy because there's no uh, it's the the dollar itself is going to is going to get get trashed which is going to lead to hyperinflation. The thing about currencies, it's, all, it's a relative thing. Uh, and you see when everything is kind of ugly, whenever the, the risk on trade, risk off trade is, uh, is back up, the dollar usually rallies. That's exactly what's happened here with Trump also. So it really shows the tremendous strength of the, uh, the U.S. economy and the fact that the Federal Reserve seems to be able to create money out of thin air and run these huge deficits. And all that does is actually spike the economy and make more and 
more confidence in the dollar, which makes the dollar go even higher. So it seems to be a virtuous cycle, and you know, every uh, central bank in the industrialized world creates money out of thin air to support their economy. But the U.S. Uh, seems to have this magical touch where they create more and more dollars, uh, which you think would lead to a reduction in the value of the dollar. But instead, the dollar the dollar continues to rally. So um, I don't think uh, I think I'm confident that the the, the Trump uh, economy is going to economy is going to do well under Trump. And uh, don't listen to what he says. Watch what he does. Example, case in point, the Trump Make America Great T-shirt is a uh, made by Gildan, which is a, a U.S. apparel manufacturer. But, of course, the, the T-shirt itself is manufactured in, uh, in Honduras. So, so, again, don't don't watch what he says. Watch what he does. And, uh, you know, he's certainly business-friendly, more business-friendly than any, any president that I've seen in my lifetime. You know, compared to, say, Obama, for example, he never really worked for private industry. He went right from college to uh, to being a community organizer to going right into the, you know, the House and the Senate and stuff. So he's never actually... A lot of these politicians never actually had jobs in the private sector. And you could say more or less the same for Clinton also, even though she worked in a law firm and did some business with the, with the state. Uh, she also is a career public servant. So Trump's a you know, career businessman. And uh, uh, so having him in the White House is just a huge change of uh, perspective that might actually be very positive uh, for the economy longer term. Uh, so that's it. So I think the theme here is uh, longer term things have, uh, have gotten ahead of themselves, shorter terms with the financials. Uh, to the upside and the bonds to the downside, but um, if you find yourself underweight in either one of those, just wait. Wait for Trump to get in the office. Wait for things to shift uh, one way or the other. We'll see what happens. Uh, in terms of what I've been working, I'm doing focusing a lot of my developments lately on the Trade Station platform, simply because uh, they give a way to monetize uh, the development much more than the Thinkorswim platform does. And uh, so this is one thing I'm working on here called the Range Bands uh, uh, Trend Dashboard. And just real quickly, uh, you show each one of the symbols, and I put my fifth line symbols as my uh, my um, universe. You can see uh, from the single view, green means the SPY is not in a trend to the upside. It's, it's in the green mode. Uh, this next column shows if we had a reversal up or down uh, in the range bands. Here we had a reversal up in Home Depot. And then this shows the underlying trend. No trend in Home Depot. Let's find one that has uh, with reversal on a trend. So here's Baidu, for example. This one had uh, is in a downtrend. So this is red. Had a reversal to the downside, went from green to red. Um, the trend is down. This is the risk or the number of points that uh, the price would have to move to the upside for the, change, the trend to change from red to blue. Here's the most interesting thing. These two columns are the equity or the uh, how successful these symbols would be, these signals would be, if you traded them for the last 12 months. So this means this first column is long and this column is short. So if you follow the range bands, end of day, daily system, for the last month in Baidu, you would have made $3,200, and you would have made $441 to trade it to the short side. So well, these two columns are basically just a, uh, a, they give you a degree of confidence in the signals. Are they, were they historically good symbols, signals? Were they historically bad signals? You can see over the last year, almost all the short signals have been bad, and a lot of the, the long signals have been good. So this is one of the things I'm working on here, and I could do a similar thing in Thinkorswim. I don't know if they have a, a, a system trading uh, ability there, but um, so that's that's what's going on in TradeStation, and I do have uh, something like 330 subscribers to my range bands indicator on the TradeStation trading app store, so that's going fairly well. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, enjoy the rest of your year. Uh, God bless America. Let's have a great uh, 2017. All the best with your trading, and take care.